to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you the latest teaching and the gospel of Matthew. Tonight we will be in Matthew 25. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, today's uh, message in Matthew 25 is the rapture. This is probably one of the most controversial words in, in all of Christianity. Uh, so much so that I believe it's Perry Stone has said that he gets more negative feedback over the term rapture than any other subject he talks about. We're going to show you inside Matthew 25 what Jesus is talking about, the elect, the church, who is going to be uh, harpazo. The, the word in the Greek is uh, to catch away, to snatch, violently grab up. It's called harpazo. So it is a biblical word. The word rapture is, is not in our uh, English uh, uh, Bible. However, it is in the Catholic Bible under St. Jerome, uh, under Rapatoris, means to catch away. So the word rapture is very controversial. Um, most people believe, uh, generally the church, that it falls into one or one of three categories, either pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. We can pretty much show you unequivocally that it is pre-trib, um, and we'll show you the, 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 the uh, sequence of events that happen. Now, we love our brothers and sisters in the Bible, uh, in Christ, you know, we don't get into petty uh, petty fights and debates over if somebody thinks it's going to be mid-trib or post-trib or whatever trib. As long as Jesus Christ is the center of our, 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 our life, our heart, our heart, our soul, and our mind, and we have eternal life. That's number one. And we need to lift up the entire body of the church. However, Jesus is teaching us something here in Matthew 25. And he teaches in these parables. And this parable is what is our plan that he has for us in life? There's a two two-pronged plan that God has installed through his son Jesus Christ and he's going to show us it here we're also going to show you that is my strong strong conjecture of many hours studying this particular subject that I believe that it's only 10 percent of the church and we'll show you areas where 10 how important the number 10 is and it happens to be here and it's in the book of, book of Luke it's 10 part First fruit is giving up your first 10. In the Greek and Hebrew, it's always 10 part. The words are used. So it's my strong conjecture that's only a small remnant of the elect in the church. Remember, Ezekiel was telling about a future prophecy down the end of the days. He was told to take a cut off the hair and a third would be blown, a third would be burned up, a third would be scattered all over the place. And he took a pinch and hid it into his garment. So he's talking about, it's showing you what would happen that two thirds of Israel would be wiped out in a coming, uh, a coming catastrophe towards the end of, of the day of the Lord. Uh, there's also references in Psalm 27, five, Isaiah 26, 17 through 21, and Zephaniah 1, 18 and Zephaniah 2, three in the Old Testament of what we call the day of the Lord, the Harpazo. The, the Church of Philadelphia, if we're gonna start our revelation study probably next week, that will be on YouTube only. So if you're not following us on YouTube, click, uh, go to YouTube, His Glory Channel, or on this uh, message, click on our avatar towards the end. And uh, you can follow us on YouTube. We'll get into the, the book of Revelation. But in the Church of Philadelphia, that gives us the church, the elect church that Jesus is talking about. We have to have the characteristics of the Church of Philadelphia. And the Church of Philadelphia matches this parable that we're about to talk about. And it's interesting, there's seven letters to seven churches. Paul talked about a literal seven churches, and each message had to go to a particular church. And the message of the Harpazo in Thessalonica, and that's where you get where the Harpazo is from Paul and Corinthians, um, who shows you what part of the church is, what, what the conditions of the people are that will be a rapture. One, you did not deny, the, you never denied my name and you never denied my word. So that means when the world comes against us in Christianity, remember Jesus said, you'll carry your cross, you have to bear your cross. And we're seeing that all over the world in persecution in the church in China and, and in Iran and in the Middle East, and it's coming to America. You look like, if you're a, a Bible-believing, literal-believing Bible-believer of God's infallible word, they're mocking you and they're making fun of you and you, you're, you're bearing the cross and people will come against you against, because of your belief in the word of God. But what Jesus is telling in the, in the Church of Philadelphia is you never denied my word. So the key thing is, if you never deny his word, means you've got to be in the word. 
Remember, we were telling you a pupil, and I don't think there's any coincidence. Remember, the rabbis say coincidence is not a kosher word. Now, there was a pew poll done, pun intended, it is actually Pew Research that does this poll, and of the church, and only 10% of the church reads the Bible and takes it literally. Hmm, you think there's a coincidence in that number? No, and we're gonna show you uh, in uh, many places uh, where 10 is the number, 10%. Again, 10 part in the Greek, 10 part in the Hebrew. Even in Jeremiah, it, refer, it refers to the 10 part as the uh, elect. So it goes deeper. God is always looking for that 10 part elect. So it's a church of Philadelphia. And it says that, remember out of the seven churches, that was the only church that Jesus said to, I will spare you the time that has not come upon the earth. That time has not come. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble in the Old Testament. That is the end days of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will he, apart her apazo, his church. And as Paul tells us in Thessalonica, when the church goes up, the Holy Spirit goes up too. And we see in Revelation 4, what happens? The lamp stands in the heavenly realm with the church. So the elect of the church is harpazoed and the Holy Spirit is there too. So when we get into the book of Revelation, we're gonna see why the world melts down like no other time in history because the comfort of the Holy Spirit is off the face of the earth. One of the reasons why you wanna be a part of the elect, because of love, getting in and knowing his word and never denying his name and never denying his word. So you got to know his word so you can't deny it. That's why he's saying even the elect would be fooled if it were possible. They can't be fooled because they know the living word of God. So we want to be prepared for this time. As I started this out, God put us on this earth for two reasons. One, because of his son. Do we accept Jesus Christ as Messiah and Lord of Kairos of our life and our heart? The answer is yes, you've entered into eternal life. As the five, the five virgins we're gonna see that didn't have their lamp lit, five is grace. They got the grace of Christ, they got the grace of eternal kingdom, but they're gonna miss the wedding ceremony because they didn't have their lamp lit. And that will explain the fives and the tens and what all this means and why the lamp wasn't lit versus the ones that were lit versus the wedding ceremony and the tradition of Israel so that it all fits together. And that's what falls into the Feast of Trumpets as well. That's the next uh, prophecy that Jesus will literally fulfill, and that's the harpazo of the church. The second thing is he's going to allude to, not allude to, he's going to tell us in Luke, uh, in the, I believe it's the Gospel of Luke uh, 17, and he's going to tell us here in Matthew about what you do with the, uh, the talents I give you. And that's after salvation has taken place. What do you do with salvation once I give it to you? Once you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you don't put your feet on and, and watch Netflix and eat Cheetos and uh, a Wendy's triple and a, and a pickle and a Biggie Fry. You can tell I've been fasting for the last three days because that sounds good. Um, so we don't put our feet up. We do the will of the Lord. That's what the ser he's referring to the servant. The servant did all the things of the Lord. We're going to also go back to the ten. When, the, when the, the, the 10 men were needing of healing in the book of Luke and uh, Jesus healed them because of their faith. So only one came back to say thank you to the Lord. That was the remnant. He's showing again that was one part or a 10 part of the 10 that was elect that came back and said, thank you, Lord. And the scripture tells us he was a Samaritan. The rest of them were saved because of their faith, but they went on to their lives. They went, kept on waiting. They were of the mindset, he'll get here when he gets here. And then in Luke, the 10 menus, the, 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 the scripture tells us that there was two, 10 servants and they were each uh, given the 10 menus. Only the first servant was said, well done, faithful servant, and he got 10 back. So the 10 is a, a, a number of precept and commandment. Are we honoring the Lord in precept and commandment? Are we listening to the gospel? Are we listening to the Torah? Are we honoring him in the precept and commandment? Two things happen with it. There is either a, a, a blessing or there's a repercussion. So 10 is always the number of precept and commandment, and that's why we have the 10 commandments. So the, out of the 10, only one used all of his minutes to, to fulfill what God had in store for him in his life. That means finishing the race, doing everything for the Lord. And he was the elect that got 10, and we see afterwards got one more. The second gentleman never said, they never said anything about, well done, my faithful servant. He just got five. He said, you'll have five cities. Five is grace. So it means he was saved, but he didn't go to the, the 10 part. Also, where we are in our eternal life in the millennial reign is based on what we do on this earth, our position. 
And that's what Jesus tells us in the, in, in the parable of the, of the cities. I'll give you 10 cities because you did, did well with 10. And the five is grace. You did well with five out of the 10. I will give you five cities. So based on what we do with our walk in Jesus Christ after we're saved, not only will that decide where, uh, whether we're harpazoed or raptured, but also that will be our position with the crowns at the Bema seat and also our position within the millennial reign and then eternity with the Lord. Because remember what Jesus says in the Church of Philadelphia. Again, you got to study the Church of Philadelphia, and we'll have that study next week. The Church of Philadelphia goes on to say, I will make you a pillar in my Jerusalem. That's where he's going to be forever. That means you're going to be in his inner circle. That means because of your love for him and you've done everything to fulfill his glory on this earth. You've given up self and you're saying, Lord, I will do whatever you want me to do. I'm a servant. You give me 10. I'm going to use all 10 for your purpose and your glory. And you're going to be in his inner circle in, in, in the new Jerusalem forever. Praise his name. Okay, let's get into the gospel. So now we've shown you in places throughout the scripture. It's my high conjecture that it's 10% of the church that will be harpazoed. Uh, let's get into the parable. We'll explain the parable, what the parable means, what the numbers mean, how this is talking about the wedding ceremony in traditional Israel, that the bride had to be ready within a 48-hour window. The bride did not know when the bridegroom was coming. So the bride had to be ready with her wedding garments on. Remember, Jesus talks about the wedding garments. How did you get in here without the proper wedding garments? We get into heaven, we'll have the white wedding garments. So it's a 48-hour window that Jesus tells us we will not know the time or the hour. That is true. But we will know within a 48-hour window based on this and based on many of the scriptures. That's why he wants us to know the entire uh, totality of the Word of God. We can't just take one part of the Bible and throw it against the wall and make doctrine on it. Out of two witnesses, my word is established. So base this on all the things that we, just, we, we talk about throughout our teachings. Okay, so let's get into it. Then the kingdom of heaven... The kingdom of heaven, okay? So this is many things. There was the kingdom of God. There's the kingdom of, of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, he's talking about taking him up to be of the kingdom of heaven. The, he, the heaven will come on the earth when Jesus comes. So this is going up to meet our Lord in glory. This is before the rat, or this is before, before the tribulation and before the Christ comes down and reigns for the Davidic covenant. The kingdom of heaven shall be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Okay, so again, based on the wedding ceremony, you didn't know when the bride was when come, the groom was going to come. You had to be ready. And it's also interesting in the tradition that when you got married, you, the, the husband or your fiance, you were li legally bound to them at that period, but it would be a year later that they would come back. And when that year would come back, you didn't know within a 48 hour window when he could come back. It was 48 hours. And that's what the Feast of Trumpets, you, you never know within a 48 hours when the Feast of Shofars actually takes place because you have to have two witnesses look at the crescent moon to, to usher in the, 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 the timing. So this all works on God's calendars of the Feast of Shofars and the wedding ceremony and the, and the 10 virgins that we're, we're talking about. So once you got engaged, what you would do is you'd go to your father's house if you're the male and you would add on another room. And then Jesus says, I go to my father's house to prepare a room for you. He was talking about that literally because he's the, he's the head of the church. He's the bridegroom. And we, the church, are the bride. So he went to heaven as our high priest and is building a room. And heaven is exactly what he meant. That's on the tradition of the, of the wedding ceremony. So he built on a house. And that first year of your marriage, you would live in, under your father's roof so that you could get uh, acclimated in your marriage. You could get into your, you know, putting God first in your life. And your, in your wedding presents were, instead of giving them dishes or whatever you give them in the Western world, they gave them enough money that they could take a sabbatical for one year so that they could come together as a man and a wife under Judaism or under, under the love of the Most High God to start their life into a holy matrimony. And that's what the Lord's going to do to us. He's going to bring us up in the wedding ceremony. He's going to put us together, and we're going to have that year of a sabbatical before we come back down to the Lord and the, and the last of the tribulation. So 10 virgins, we're going to go through these step by step to explain what they mean because everything means something. Uh, as Jesus says, uh, every, uh, I, I didn't come to replace the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it to every yacht and tittle. Dot in the eye, cross in the T. 10 is always the number of precepts and commandments, as we said before. 10 commandments. Uh, 10 would be a, uh, a penalty 
under the law that if you did not, uh, if you were an illegitimate child, for example, Perez was an illegitimate child because of the incest between uh, Judah and his um, daughter-in-law, Tamar, who created Perez. It was exactly 10 generations in the book of Ruth from Perez to David because there was a, there, there was a punishment that if it was illegitimate, there was 10 generations. So there's a punishment and there's a, in a, in a commandment based on, are you obeying my precepts and commandments? So God is telling us we need to be obedient. The word virgin is always an idiom. Uh, again, expositional constancy throughout the scripture is, oh, is a fancy theological term to say that the Holy, the Holy Spirit is always consistent with its idioms, its colors, its numbers. Everything means consistently through the Bible. So we're not confused to say, well, a virgin means this here and a virgin means that there and a virgin means this. It's always, that it means pure, it's cleansed, it's pure. How can you become a virgin? Because of the Lamb of God taking away the sins away. Christ through God the Father is taking the sins away because of our heart relationship. And when we are in the eyes of the Father, he sees no sin. Your sins will be as scarlet, but they'll be washed as white as snow. So we're virgins. So both groups are virgins. So that tells us both groups are saved. Sin has been done away with them, but they fall into two different groups based on what? The condition of their heart and the activity, what they're doing and not doing on the face of the earth, exactly the way it is for us. What are we doing and what are we not doing? So they took their lamps. We know the lamp stands represent the church in Revelation. And we also know the lamp stands are filled with olive oil. Olive oil is always an idiom of what? The Holy Spirit, Jesus telling us, if you are of me, your lamps will be lit. Do you not put your light under a bush? You, you don't hide your lamp stand. We are the church. We are the lamp stand. We don't hide it. And it's got to be filled with olive oil. Olive oil is the Holy Spirit. So if we're walking as a light of Christ, we are not hiding our light. It's filled with olive oil and we're walking in his purpose and his glory with our lamp stands lit. That means doing his will. If a servant getting 10 minions, we do the 10 minions. And that is the way he wants us to do. He's saying, I give you everything. You do all the things I ask you to do. It just be my servant. That's why we're called servants. And he went out to meet the bridegroom. So they went out to meet the bride. Didn't know when the bridegroom was coming. It could come in that 48 hour window. Now five were wise and five were foolish. Okay, so wise versus foolish. The only wisdom can come from the wisdom of the knowledge of the Lord. That's one of two of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, we'll do a teaching on the gifts of the Spirit here uh, um, soon. But two of the gifts are the gifts of, of wisdom and the gift, uh, the gift of knowledge. And that only comes from the Holy Spirit. So the only one comes from the Holy Spirit, that means your lamp needs to be lit with olive oil and have the Holy Spirit in you. So that's the only way you can become wise. It was accredited to Abraham as righteous because of his faith and love. Abraham would have been harpazo, no question about it, because he was wise, he knew God, he loved God, he was filled with, filled with his glory, he was uh, faithfully waiting for the Lord. Five is the number of grace, and it's only through grace by Jesus Christ that we can have eternal life. Nothing we can do in our fleshly way. Remember when Jesus was asked, if we have to do all these things and nobody's good, uh, Rabbi, how, how, can, how can man be saved? And Jesus says, with, with, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things, are, all things are possible. He's telling us a very valuable thing. We in our human flesh, with our contaminated sin nature and our DNA in our heart, born sin nature, we cannot save ourselves. It's impossible is what Jesus says. We need a savior. And that savior is the Messiah. That savior is the bridegroom that we need to have our lamps lit waiting for his return. So the five were the wise, again, by the Holy Spirit. Five were foolish. Five, they're grace, so they're saved. Uh, but they're not doing the will of the Lord. They take the, 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 uh, the, the attitude, and I've heard this many times from Christians, and it just, I just can't get it. I just don't understand it. It's, it's love. Is, uh, he gets, he'll get here when he gets here. He hasn't been here for you know five, 6,000 years. We're in the air, 6,000 years. 5,778 on the Jewish calendar. He, he'll get here when he gets here. Well, that's not love. Love is anxiously awaiting his return. Being that light, not denying his name and not denying his word, meaning being in his word and having the light of the Holy Spirit on your heart through his word. So those are the two difference. The, those who are foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They have a lamp. 
They're the church. The lamp's going to go up to heaven at a particular time, but only the lamps that are lit are going to go to heaven through the harpazo or the rapture. So they're foolish. They took their lamp. They had no oil. They didn't do anything. They had no oil. They were just waiting around to the last second. We're going to see at the last second. They're like, oh my gosh, we don't have any oil. It's too late. It's too late. So they didn't have their, 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 they were not on fire with the Holy Spirit. But the wise took their oil and their vessels with their lamps. Again, remember, wise can only be done by grace through Jesus Christ and your love for him. That's the gift of, the, of, of wisdom, the gift of knowledge through the Holy Spirit. It's not wise on our own account. We're just being obedient as servants because of our heart that compels us to love him. So we want to fill our lamps with light. We fill it. But the wise took oil and the vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. He delayed because they didn't know when he was coming. He could come in a 48 hour window. They're like, he didn't show up the first hour. Let's take a nap. Let's, 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 let's go to sleep. So they delayed and he, they slumbered and slept. Are you a fall in sleep today for the coming of Christ? Are you gonna know when he's coming? Are you filled with your lamp? Is your lamp filled? Are you gonna finish the race so that when God comes in, brings you into his eternal glory, and he says, well done my faithful servant, come in, and here's your 10 minyas? Or are you gonna wait to go through the tribulation or get to heaven and have tears of regret? Yeah, you made heaven. Yeah, you're, you've got salvation, but you're gonna have tears of regret because there's so many things on this earth you wanted me to do, Lord, and I didn't do it. And I had that when I had my near-death experiences. The Lord showed me in literal visions. You can see that on our testimony on our website, www.hisglory.tv. At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. And usually the bridegroom would come uh, in, in the last watch. Uh, and this is uh, midnight uh, in the Hebrew would be the last watch. Would, or no, it would be the second to the last watch. Between 12 and 3 uh, is, would be this, this, this watch. Uh, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. So you got to trim their lamp. God is always trimming our lamp. That's through the trials and tribulations. We're being pruned because he's purifying us. We're pruning. We're always pruning. We're always pruning. He's always pruning us. And it's always a work in progress. We're always trying to get, we take one step backwards, two steps forward. And that's the Lord always working and molding us and shaping us. And that's why we have the trials and tribulations of our life because God is telling us every day, how much do you love me? How much do you trust me? It's only gonna be the ones that have their lamps lit. If life is too easy, you're gonna put your feet up and you're gonna, you're gonna sleep and slumber. We didn't call to the earth to sleep and slumber. We're called for your glory. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. Our lamps are out. Give us some of yours. Saying sal it's salvation in the harpazo can't be done by anyone else. This case, he's talking about the harpazo. So you can't go to somebody that's, that, that has been on fire for the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit and say, give me some of your Holy Spirit. It's time. No, it's something you have to do it yourself. Remember the children of Israel all had to go out and get their own manna. The, 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 the bread of life. And you can't get salvation for your kids. You can't get salvation for your friends. You can't get salvation for your family members. Each person has been put on their heart to make a decision. Do I love the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, my soul, and my being? There's salvation. Two, now what do I do? Now starts my walk. Now starts my sanctification process. Now starts bearing the cross in the wilderness period and being, being trimmed of the, of the, of the, of the lamp. We're going to be trimmed. God is always pruning us. We always say, well, why? Why does this happen? He's getting us profound. He's, he's, he's cleaning us up. He's putting a glaze on us. He's getting us stronger and stronger and stronger. Each step, another progression. So give some of your oil. The lamps are going out. So nobody can do it for you. You have to do it based on the condition of your heart. And then the actions you take hand by hand, walking with the most high God because of your love for him. But the wise answer said, no, lest there should be enough for us and you, but you go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. Go buy it, go sell it. You can't buy and sell your way. You have to store up for your riches in Christ Jesus. There's nothing that you in this earth you can take with us. You can't buy the Holy Spirit. Remember when in the book of Acts where the, where the sorcerer guy comes up and says, I want that Holy Spirit stuff too. How much is it? Peter said, ah, you, you can't buy the gifts of the Spirit. It's about the condition of loving the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and activating this, the Holy Spirit in, in you and with you. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were not there. And those who are ready, got to be ready. Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you not denying his name? 
Are you not denying his word, meaning being in his word, anxious awaiting his return, loving him and saying, Lord, I'm going to do all things you want me to do until you're coming. Are you anxiously awaiting the return? Are you ready for your, with your lamp lit with the Holy Spirit? Are you activating the Holy Spirit in you? The bride, so if you d deny the gifts of the Spirit, you deny the Holy Spirit, uh-oh, that's going to be a problem because we want the Holy Spirit uh, to be uh, alive in us and with us. And those who were ready went in to him to the wedding and the door was shut. Ooh, remember what Jesus said in the church of Philadelphia too? He says, those, I, I have the key of David and I opened the door that no one can shut and shut that no one can open. Hmm, he's talking about this. He's talking about the wedding ceremony. He's talking about the harpazo. And the, I came into the wedding, the bridegroom, and the, uh, the, 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 the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, and, and the bride, ready, have their lamps lit, coming into the wedding ceremony because they were ready for him and the door is shut to the wedding ceremony. That's what he's talking about to the Church of Philadelphia as well. Afterwards, the other virgin came also saying, uh, uh, Kairos, Kairos, open to us. But he answered and says, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. You had your opportunity. You didn't do it. Are they saved? Yes, they're saved because they were virgins and five is the number of grace, but they missed the wedding ceremony. Will they get it in the tribulation? Yes, they should. We hope, we, we pray that they do, most likely, because they've seen this. There'll be many, many, many that are saved in the tribulation, more so than the history of the earth, because they're gonna understand what the difference was between those who are gone, they're, they're left, Where, where'd they go? Versus those who are still there. And unfortunately, there's gonna be a lot of churches have a lot of pastors and there's gonna be a lot of churches that have a full congregation. These Some of these big, big mega churches, they don't have to worry about their, their attendance dropping. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be the same, probably bigger, because people are gonna come in and, and, and be realized the true church. The true church was gone. It's gone because they love the Lord. Uh, not saying that the others don't love the Lord, but the love is what you do with it. Are you on fire? Are you lit with the Holy Spirit? Are you acting with him? Are you having the conditions of, of, of the church of Philadelphia? Are you not denying his name? You can't stand neutral if you're a Christian. You can't sit in a, sit back and say, well, I love Jesus Christ, but you know, I got this part of the family here and I got these friends over here that are, nah, I, I better I just don't say anything. I'm not gonna say anything about my love for him. And if you're not in the word of God, or as we said earlier, Pew Poll, only 10% of the, of the church in the United, in the world, is reading and believes in the infallible word of God. Only 10%. Coincidence? No, nope, not coincidence. It's truth. It's 10 part, a tithe. And that is the, the elect that will be taken up. But he, has, he said, I don't know you. Watch therefore, for you neither know the day or the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. You don't, know, you don't know the day or the hour. It also goes to our teaching in Matthew 24 when he talked about the day or the hour. We will know when the second coming of Jesus Christ is to the earth. Remember, Jesus Christ comes to the earth two more times and he's coming back three times. So let me explain what I mean by that. I think we explained that in Matthew 24, I'm not sure. The, the scripture tells us in, in Corinthians and in uh, the Apostle Paul in Thessalonica, that the harpazo, the catching away, the snatching up. We will be meeting Christ uh, within the twinkle of an eye in the heavenly realm. So he's not physically coming to the first heaven. He's not coming to the earth. We meet him in the air. And so he definitely he doesn't come to the earth. The, the second coming of Jesus Christ, we see in Isaiah, he goes to Basra, dips his garment, and we'll explain that more in the book of Revelation teaching. He dips his garment in, in blood. And that's, that's where he tells in Matthew 24 to, the, to, to the Israel, in the middle of the tribulation with the abomination of desolation, don't go down and get your cloak, head to Petra. Petra uh, is, means rock, and there, if you go to Petra, which is in Jordan, it's literally a huge place where you could put about a million people. I believe it was uh, Oral Roberts who put uh, just literally tens of thousands of New Testament Bibles all over the rocks in Petra so that when the Jews would come back uh, in the end days, after the tribulation or the midway of the tribulation that they could know who the messiah is well the antichrist is coming up to in the, in the hebrew is called basra basra means sheepfold and how literal is that and our shepherd is coming to the sheepfold and so he's cutting off the, the petra or petra because the, uh, the antichrist is, is going after uh, jesus is elect the the, the the nation of israel that are love the lord and no, notice they uh, recognize him as the messiah then this third or the second 
coming to the earth, he will come with his white horse and, and everyone that's in the wedding garment. All the saints will come down with him to rule and reign and usher in the millennial reign. And your position in the millennial reign will be based on what you do on earth. This is like boot camp, boot camp to be a Marine. After boot camp, based on how you trained, will be the spot that you put in your, in your, in your life with the Lord. So watch, therefore, you don't know the, the day or the hour the Son of Man is coming. We won't know the day or the hour. So anybody that says, he's coming on March 19th, 2019, that's a false prophet because Jesus said we won't know the day or the hour. But he didn't say anything about not knowing the season. He wants us to know the season. It's a 48-hour window. He didn't say the week. He said the day or the hour, which fits into the tradition of the wedding ceremony and here. And also the Feast of Shofars. Show, the Feast of Shofars, again, can happen in a 48-hour window when the new, the new moon comes, the crescent moon, and then you, you blow the shofar to usher in the Feast of Shofars. That's physically the fifth fifth grace on the, on the seven Hebrew uh, festivals, which Christ has not literally fulfilled yet, and he will come in and fulfill that on the harpazo of the church. So we won't know the day or the hour. But if you, if you take the Bible literally, which we do, we see that when the prophet Jeremiah said that they would be in Babylon for 70 years to the day, uh, Daniel said, it'll be 70 years to the day. It was 70 years to the day. When Ezekiel 4 said, uh, uh, turn on this side, on this side because of the Lord, we see that the Ezekiel 4 prophecy came to the exact day, May 14th, 1948, that Israel was established in the land. 2,500 years prior, Ezekiel's told by God the exact day Israel would become a nation again. We're celebrating the 70th anniversary of the nation of Israel this year. So be aware, be aware, get your lampstands lit because all these Bible things in Matthew 24, the birth pains are speeding up. There's no coincidence. Again, coincidence is not a kosher word. So the Lord is telling us, be prepared. But Taking the Bible literally, we know from the date of the abomination of desolation that Jesus talks about in Matthew 24, there will be three and a half years. And we, we will know from Joel, and we also know from the book of Revelation, that the, the, the sun and the moon will become dark, the day of the Lord is coming. It shows us that we'll know the day that Jesus Christ is coming back, the second time to issue in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. We don't know the day or the hour of the harpazo. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. So now he's telling us this is what separates the sheep and the goats. This is what separates the harpazo from those who have to go through the tribulation based on the condition of their heart, based on not denying my name, based on getting into my word, based on having their lamp lit ready for me. Now what do you do with it? Because that's what is going to be the harpazo. So he says, and to one have five talents, to another two, and to another one. Teach according to his own ability. Immediately he went on a journey. So that's what the Lord is doing to us. He's given us a talent. And that talent can be a literal talent of finances. That talent can be a literal of our heart. What he's, it's our will. It's our will for our lives from him, for him, for his purpose and his glory. He's given us three things to do. We go out and do three things. If he's given us three things to do and we've only gone out and done one, we're gonna fall short and we're gonna have a tear of regret. So if he gives us five, don't worry about somebody else that's got 10. And don't worry about somebody that's got three. That's jealousy, that's the, that's the spirit of covetousness. No, Lord, you give me what you chose. Your ways are higher than my ways. You give me five, I'm completing all five. And that's the way we have to think about it and the way of the Lord with our heart and our love for him. Then when he received the five talents, went and traded them and made another five. He made the five is grace and the five became 10, the 10th part of precept commandments of obedience. And likewise, we have received two, gained two more also. But he also received one, went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord for the money. And, and after a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled the accounts. So when we get to heaven, our accounts are gonna be settled. First, the Bema seat for those who accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior for the good and bad. Not good, and the, not the bad that we've done in sin, because sin's washed away, but the bad knowing, here's your report card. You were acquired on the, your assignment on the earth after salvation, five things. And you, my son or daughter, accomplished three. You're gonna have a tear of regret. Why didn't I do the other two? There's no time to go back. It's only what we do on the earth for him that's in the importance. 
And that's what the Bema seat is going to be. Bema comes from the old Greek of the Olympics, where you have gold, silver, bronze. And that's where you went to the Bema to get your, your awards. And we don't get the rewards or the five crowns, which are based on grace because of love. If you look at all five crowns that you can get on the Bema seat, every one of them is a condition of love. It's not a works. It's a love then works, as James tells us. After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled the accounts. So he said to each who received five, I'll give you five others, saying, Lord, you have delivered me five talents. I've gained five more talents besides them. In the book of Luke, it was the ten minions. The one servant out of the ten completed all ten. And it's the only one. He said, well done, my faithful servant. Come in. Wow. Is there a coincidence there? No. He also who has received two talents come in and say, Lord, you have delivered me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord just said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter in the joy of your kairos. So back to Luke, putting all the uh, precept upon precept. The one that had five was in charge of five cities. The one that had 10 was in charge of 10 cities. The one that hit it, had gnashing of teeth and it went to the one who had 10. So the 10, even though he had 10 out of 10, he got the extra 11 and 11 is a very biblical number when it comes to the Lord. Um, you, you be, uh, then he said, received one talent, came and said, Lord, Kairos, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you, it's yours. I didn't do anything with it. I sat on it, I hid it, I put, I put it under a bush. I didn't do anything with it. But as Kairos answered and said, you wicked, uh, not Kairos, his Lord. Uh, Kairos is only for uh, the, the Lord God Almighty. This is a, a parable. You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reaped where I did not sow and gathered where I did not scatter seeds. So you ought to be uh, deposited my money with the bankers. And by, at my coming, you could have at least, least received the interest. Should have done at least something with it instead of sitting on your tail and not doing anything and saying, Oh, he'll come when he comes, or I'm not saved, or you know what? I go to church, but uh, that's the, I'm not going to follow that way of the Lord. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to those who have the ten talents. Give it to the one who has the ten talents. Those who are last will be first. First will be last. It's about giving up ourselves for him. For to everyone who has, more will be given. He will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. What is he talking about? He's not talking about here on earth. He's talking about the millennial reign in eternity. We are doing this boot camp for our purpose in the millennial reign and cast out the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, Woo. where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, I knew the Lord, but I didn't take him seriously. There are many Christians in churches today that say they're Christians. They're not, they're not saved. Saving is a relationship that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ and your heart is circumcised. You become a new person. You become a new creation. You're born again. You walk a new way. You have the gifts of the Spirit you, or the gift of the fruit of the Spirit. Do, are you growing fruit? If you're not growing fruit, good fruit, you're not born again. And when the Son of Man comes in his glory, doxa is, is the word here. That's the Greek word for literally the name of this ministry. It's his literal essence and the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. So he'll come back issuing in the millennial reign of the Davidic covenant. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will have the judgment. And he will separate from one another, the nations, literal nations, the physical earth are sheep and goats as well. They will be judged, the literal, or the literal nations, and then the people. And, the, and as the shepherd divides his sheep and the goats to the right hand to the left, and he will sit the sheep on the right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you blessed, uh, you, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. From the foundation of the world, it was prepared for you. This is very fascinating because if you read this in the Greek, that means before the beginning of the world, this was prepared for you, that God's plan has always been that from the beginning of the world, that every single person, Jesus went and gathered another room for him in his father's house. And it was up to you to decide whether you were going to go in that room or not, based on the condition of your heart. And there are going to be many rooms that are left open, which is sad that they're away from the Lord forever. But God's intention was to know me and love me through my son and through a love relationship. It's always been about love. For I was hungry 
and you didn't give me food. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and you, and you visited me. I was in a prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer and say, Lord, when did you see the hungry and feed you? Or thirsty will give you to drink. When did you see a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? They're confused. Well, when did that happen? We didn't see that happen to you. He's going to tell us just the very lesson. Are we doing these things? Are we doing what the Lord told us to do first? Preach the gospel from east to west to north to south. The Great Commission, telling the, the, the gospel to all nations. And are we taking care of the orphans? Are we taking care of the widows? Are we helping those young children? Are we doing the will of the Lord for, for him in our life? That's what he's saying to all the least of these. If you did not do it, you were not doing it for me. Or did we just sit back and just let it happen? He'll get here when he gets here and pass by, pass by and do whatever we want to do in the world. Are we serving the world? Or are we serving Theos through his son, Jesus Christ? We didn't, we, when did we see a stranger or, or clothed? When did you see sick or person come to you? And he said, my, uh, and as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. By not taking care of any of these people, even into the least, means you didn't do it for me. So that when we go out in the glory of the Lord and we take the ambassadorship of his, his glory, we're doing it for him. To those who are in prison, those who are hurt, those who are weak, those who need help, those who need money, those who need the, down, that need prayer. Those, we are to be the light of Christ and lift. We are a church for sinners, not a, not a museum for saints. We're a hospital for sinners. We need to lift them up and we need to be that light of Christ to all people and help whatever the Lord puts on our hearts to do. We can't ignore the orphans. We can't ignore the widows. We can't ignore the things that are going on. We need to stand up in what Christ through the Father has told us to do for his purpose and his glory. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed, and in the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. What is he talking about? The devil and the watchers, the angels that fell with Satan, the, the, the angels that went to Mount Hermon in the, in the book of Enoch and the 300 angels that uh, went against the Lord and created a pact together. And that's where their eternal home is gonna be in the lake of fire with Satan. So, you know, there was some controversy this last week where the Pope uh, said that there was no literal hell. He was telling somebody whether he did it, said it or not, the truth of the matter is Jesus tells us over and over and over and over again, there's a literal hell. And we don't wish that upon anybody. And he's telling us how to get there. God has given us from the beginning of the earth. You want to have a room in my house forever in love, joy, peace, hope? Here it is. It's through the shepherd's gate. This is the way, the truth, and the life. I don't want anybody to go there. You chose yourself to go to that lake of fire, and there is a lake of fire for heaven. For every light, there's dark. And for every heaven, there's, there's the opposite. And Jesus talks about that as much as he talks about the kingdom of heaven. It is a literal place. It is a literal place, and we pray. And that is our, one of the roles that the Lord has for us and each person's will is the salvation of people, whether family, friends, or people that are around you to give the light of Christ so that you can save them so that they have a room in his eternal home forever and away from the lake of fire. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. Are we helping the orphans? Are we, or are we too worried about the big churches? Remember, we're talking about the Church of the United States today. 90 99 cents out of every dollar goes to building costs and salaries. Where is it feeding the orphans? Where is it feeding the widows? Where is it spreading the gospel? Where is it doing all these outreach programs for the priorities that the Lord has told us to do? It's not for a kitchen to have a ch chili cook-off and then have uh, how many, your report card, how many people came to Christ this week? How many, people, how many orphans did you feel, f fill? Well, we don't have any orphans in our area. Well, there's orphans in Kenya. There's or orphans in Liberia. There's orphans in India, Pakistan. What are you doing to do something about it? The Lord's called on all nations. He said, preach the gospel, not to your small community. He said, preach the gospel to all the nations from east to west to north to south, to every creature to know who I am, the living God. As his glory ministry is doing today, we are in every country of the world bringing hope to people to know the internal Christ for eternity through a love relationship. Then he also answered him saying, Lord, when do you see a hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? You did not minister you. Then he will answer them saying, surely I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. So the least you did not do is like the rich man. 
with Lazarus the beggar. That's not a parable. That was a real story. And the rich man had all the glory of the earth. He was the first. And then he went to last. He went to the kingdom of Sheol forever. And Lazarus had his hard time on the earth, which was last, became first. And the man who was rich had the eternal flame on his tongue because he didn't feed Lazarus. He didn't do the will. And he had a hardened heart not to know the most high God. And he even went up to Father Abraham. Abraham, go warn my five brothers. And Abraham says, hey, they don't listen to Moses and the prophet. They're not going to listen to the dad. What's he mean? He says, you had the word of God. Moses is the five books of the Torah and the prophets of the Old Testament. He's saying they had the word of God. If they're not going to listen to the word of God and know truth which is on their heart, each person has it there. They just need to dig deep to find it and accept the Kairos into their heart, the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone has it. It's right before you. Are you going to say, yes, I want it, or are you going to push it away because of the world? And that rich man, he knew his internal home. He knew it was a righteous decision because he knew what he didn't do and he should have done. Don't get to that point because eternal life is forever. And we close out in verse 46. And these will go away into everlasting punishment. This is, this is hell. This is Sheol. This is the lake of fire forever. It is real, real place. But the righteous into eternal life. The only way you become righteous is through faith and love in the Most High God, through His Son, Jesus Christ. It was a credit to Abraham as righteous. And that's where we get eternal life with Him in love, joy, peace, hope. And that's why today... When we accept Jesus Christ, we've got a ticket to go home. We're one of the five virgins. Which, which, which one of the five is up to you from that point on? You punched, you punched your ticket because you love him. But are you going to light that, that, light that uh, lamp with a, with a Holy Spirit and anxiously await his return and getting in his word, never denying his word, never denying his name, and go up with the church? That's what he's looking for today so that you can have that place in his kingdom glory forever. If you're following us on YouTube, please click on the avatar of the His Glory logo. Uh, subscribe to YouTube, uh, uh, His Glory channel on YouTube as we're going to start the bo a book of Revelation on the our, our YouTube channel uh, exclusively starting next week. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you today and always. God bless.